So I'll be talking about the medium resolution spectroscopy. So uh, medium resolution spectroscopy, or MRS, with MIRI, uh, uses four integral field units and simultaneously observes uh, spectra over a range of approximately 5 microns to 28 microns, um, and up to a field of view of 6.6 arc seconds and 7.7 arc seconds. So this is the only JWST configuration that offers medium resolution spectroscopy, long word of 5.2 microns. And as you can see in this footprint on the sky, all four IFUs are simultaneously observed and their names are channel one, two, three, and four. And the shortest wavelength, channel one, has the smallest field of view of about 3.2 to 3.7 arc seconds. And then the longest wavelength, channel 4, has um, a field of view of the 6.6 .6 to 7.7 .7 arc seconds. So while you have four IFUs uh, that are simultaneously observed, the spectra are projected onto two detectors. So the data you get, the raw data you get when you take a single observation is you'll get a short detector and a long detector image. Um, and the Channel one and two are both on the short detector and three and four are on the long detector. And the spectral resolving power ranges from 1,500 at the longest wavelength um, up to 3,500 at the shortest wavelengths. So uh, the MRS, like I said, has four channels and these four channels um, from the four IFUs are divided into a total of 12 subbands to cover the full wavelength range. So in order to actually observe the full wavelength range, you have to observe in three grading settings. So for one observation, if you are looking at the short uh, grading setting, what? you'll get uh, just the first third in each channel. Uh, so there'll be breaks in your spectrum if you want the full mm -hmm. thing. So in order to actually get and cover the full wavelength range from about 5 uh, to 28 microns, you have to then also observe in the medium grading and then the long grading um, if you want uh, sort of a continuous spectrum. So uh, onto the performance that we've seen uh, through cycle one. Uh, the absolute flux calibration um, is currently based on the observations of the single star in commissioning. Um, so it's, um, it, it, it does perform quite well, but there are some, um, some artifacts long word of 20 microns. So keep that in mind if you're really interested in the longest wavelengths. Um, this is something we've continued to, um, iterate on through cycle one as we, as we're getting, um, more calibration data. Uh, the wavelength calibration has already had, um, quite substantial improvements throughout um, cycle one and additional observations. So the wavelength calibration is currently um, accurate to about 10 to 20 kilometers per second. Uh, some slices, however, um, and sections of the wavelength, um, since the IFU has multiple slices, each one of those has to be wavelength calibrated. Um, so some of the slices um, and certain sections of the wavelength um, can be inaccurate by up to 50 kilometers per second. Um, and this is in areas where there's, say, a large gap between the spectral lines that we had for calibration um, or our um, slices that are um, kind of more on the edges that doesn't, don't have as much calibration data. Um, so we're working on further improving this with additional observations to make sure we get good coverage of all the wavelength and slices. Um, so this is just a pretty picture to show currently how um, the MRS is functioning. So this was from the, um, this is of the cat's eye nebula that was taken during commissioning. So there's three pointings of the MRS. So as I was saying, it's an IFU. So you get not only spectral information, um, you'll also get spatial information. Um, and so then you can get spatial information of say a single line, and so this is of the H1 line, and this is the neon 2 line um, in the cat's eye nebula, and then you can you can stitch things together um, and take multiple observations if you want a wider field of view. But, so. Uh, so this is uh, updates now to our recommendations for cycle two. Uh, so for MRS, for any science observation, uh, we really are recommending a four-point dither pattern. Uh, and this is because the MRS is undersampled 
um, both, uh, the, both the spatial point spread function and the spectral line function are, are undersampled. So spatially, um, if you have something that you actually care about, you know, the, if it's a extended source, you really need the four point dither pattern to resolve, uh, the point spread function. But even if you don't care about the structure of your source, uh, the four point dither pattern is really needed to get a good, um, sampling of the spectral line resolution. So we recommend that for all targets. Um, and now for uh, background em um, emission, we also recommend taking backgrounds for most science applications. So um, at the shorter wavelengths of channel one and two, um, the background emission is actually quite low. Um, you start to see it in channel three and then it dominates um, in channel four longward of 20 microns. Um, so the only case where you could probably get away without a dedicated background um, is if you had a very bright, isolated point source um, where you would really trust uh, an infield background annulus um, that that wouldn't be contaminated by anything. Um, but often when you're, if you're taking sort of an infrared spectra um, for the first time, you might find things in your field that you didn't expect to find. <laughs> so um, that's why uh, we, we recommend, um, unless you're sure that you're going to have an isolated field, um, to take uh, background observations. Uh, background observations are also very useful um, in removing some detector artifacts. So there's some hot and warm pixels that vary over time. So background observations will help flag those. Um, as well as, so this is raw data um, for the short detector and the long detector. And in the short detector, you can see that there's these bright column stripping um, that you can, uh, and then so if you've taken some background observations, you can use that to correct for those. And um, we also get these cosmic showers, um, which I've kind of pointed out um, with the red arrows. So it helps um, mitigate the effects of those. So an observation of your background should be taken with a detector readout parameter. So the same N groups uh, that's useful for your science exposure. Um, and for most science cases, just a two point dither in the background will be good enough to help mitigate these effects. But if you're looking at really faint extended science sources um, where you really want to get uh, kind of down into the noise, um, then you might need a total exposure depth comparable to your science. Uh, the other recommendation is to take simultaneous imaging. So this is actually default um, in the APT right now to take simultaneous imaging. Um, so this is sort of the imager field of view compared to the MRS. Um, and this is default because it will help improve the astro astrometric accuracy, um, especially if you're trying to combine multiple data cubes. And you know, it also does the obvious of giving you some nice scientific images next to your source. Um, so we have a defaulted recommended strategy, especially if you're just using this for um, improving um, astrometry. So the filter that's most useful for improving astrometry is a 770W filter. Um, it gives good measurements of stars in the field um, and just a standard um, 50 groups. It's usually good for um, measurements um, without saturating. Um, so the only reason you wouldn't take a simultaneous image is if you're running into data limits. Um, and so then you could remove the simultaneous imaging to fit within requirements. Um, and the last recommendation uh, has to do with fringe correction. So just like most infrared spectrometers, MRS does have fringing uh, that you can see in sort of the black, black spectrum here is the raw spectrum. Um, and these are caused by standing waves in the detector and the dichroics. So the pipeline um, automatically runs the first fringe um, fringe correction step for the fringe flat. Uh, but there are two pipeline steps. Um, and the second one, you'll have to run yourself. Um, so if you're just downloading a high level data product from MAST, um, you will only have the first correction, which is the fringe flat, which gives you um, the orange spectrum. Um, and so if you want the cleanest spectrum, you will need to rerun it again um, by telling the pipeline to not skip the residual fringe step correction. Um, and then you'll have the blue spectrum. So um, in summary, MRS is performing well. We've continued to work on some of the calibrations. 
and our recommended updated recommended strategies for cycle two are to use four point dithers for all science observations, uh, take a dedicated background observation, um, use the simultaneous imaging, and then um, if you're worried about fringing in your data, you need to reprocess it yourself using the residual fringe step correction.